So about two months ago, I posted a Gen 4 SSD roundup video where I talked about 15 different models, uh, but the one that I didn't have at the moment and the one that was actually the most requested one in the comments under the video was this crucial P5 Plus. Now, it is one of the cheapest Gen 4 drives on the market, which is probably the reason it sparked such an interest. But as we all know, uh, having Gen 4 next to its name doesn't always mean it is a fast SSD and what is on the box means very little when it comes to the real world performance. So let's see how good this P5 Plus actually is and how it compares to about 20 other drives I've tested so far. Let's go! This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable, and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Now the P5 Plus comes in a simple box with just the drive in it. Uh, the heatsink is not included, which is something that you want for pretty much every Gen 4 SSD. Even if you won't see it in most builds, I really do appreciate that they went with a very clean design. A black PCB with a nice sticker is actually more than enough for this price point. There are several capacities available, uh, 500 gigabytes, one terabyte or two terabytes, uh, with the one and two terabyte options being the most sensible, uh, thanks to a better price to gigabyte ratio and a better performance. Now I will be testing the one terabyte version today. Now this SSD is pretty typical, it has a controller, it has some flash and a bit of DRAM cache. Uh, Crucial is owned by Micron, which is one of the largest manufacturers of flash memory, so it comes with Micron's own uh, 176 layer TLC NAND and a Micron in-house controller. Now interestingly enough, uh, the controller does include hardware encryption, which is something that actually many SSDs don't offer, and especially so the more affordable ones like this one. And they're also including uh, what they call integrated power loss immunity, which kind of helps to prevent data loss in case of a power outage. Again, this is also something that most competitors don't offer. And I would say all this sounds very good from a business or from a workstation perspective as well, uh, but crash testing is not something I do for my reviews, so time will tell if these drives really do hold up better than others. Now, durability-wise, uh, you get 600 terabytes total bytes written spec for the one terabyte model, and you get a five-year-long warranty, which is also pretty typical in this class. So as usual, I'm going to start with my PCMark 10 benchmarks, and the PCMark 10 quick test uh, contains various tests that kind of replicate those light tasks that we do uh, with our PCs on a daily basis. And those are the things like uh, working with documents or photos, for example, but also things like loading games. And this is a great benchmark for anyone that wants to add a second SSD to their system for those very simple tasks. And the P5 Plus is in the sub top of the chart, with most SSDs above it typically being a lot more expensive. The SN770 is an odd one out, as that is a drive without DRAM that really kind of benefits from our high-end 12900K DDR5 test bench, but the crucial is keeping up with the top tier drives while outperforming the majority of mid-range Gen 4 SSDs. And that is a pretty great result for a drive with an aggressive pricing. Uh, but let's look at the full PC Mark 10 suite, uh, which is a bit more intense test that is meant to replicate more serious and more active use of your system and the drive itself. Now, this is usually a very good test to look at if you plan to use uh, this SSD as your main drive, for example, or to maybe run some applications that are heavier on the SSD. And here the P5 Plus holds up great as well, keeping that sub top positioning with pretty small differences with top tier drives like the SN850, MP600 Pro and KC3000, which again usually cost a lot more. It is even beating the 980 Pro and the Firecuda 530 and it is well ahead of other cheaper drives like the Sabrent Rocket and Aura's Gen 4 SSD as well as the SN750 SE. Now, the PCMark consistency test is usually where uh, cheaper drives start to struggle uh, because this is a very extreme, very long stress test that really pushes the drive to its limits, pretty much. 
so it's not really that relevant for most of you, but it is still a very good test to see how an SSD performs when really stressed for a long period of time. And the P5 Plus continues to hold up really well here. I guess it's because Crucial didn't really cause down to QLC memory or by skipping on the DRAM cache. Now, I would not call this the most logical purchase for a workstation setup as some other top tier drives will be, but I'm actually more than happy with this result. Now, pure sequential speeds are not something that I usually like to focus on. Uh, most brands just love them for marketing purposes, but they're not really that relevant for an actual day-to-day -day performance. And even when you're looking for an SSD for your PlayStation, for example, uh, things like uh, access time and latency are way more important than the straight up speed, in my opinion. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Sony does have a minimum sequential read speed requirement. And I kind of personally think that this is pretty unnecessary to focus on. But if you are looking for an SSD for your PlayStation 5, I do think it is wise to at least match that required speed. And with a score of 5755 megabytes per second, the P5 Plus does meet that requirement. And given the overall performance, it will be actually a great choice for a PlayStation 5 use. But you do have to use a heatsink because Gen 4 SSDs do get very hot and that goes for every one of the 20 drives in my list. And this P5 Plus is no exception here. In very light tasks, you're usually fine without it, uh, hitting around 68 degrees in the light PC Mark 10 test. Uh, but once you really start stressing the drive or if you run it somewhere where it cannot easily get rid of the heat, like a PlayStation 5, for example, the temperature can easily go a lot higher. In this FLIR image, uh, during a stress test, the controller goes over 90 degrees, at which point performance will start to drop. Now, most motherboards uh, nowadays do come with an SSD heatsink, but if yours doesn't have it for some reason, uh, you can actually pick one up on Amazon for around $10. I will leave some links in the description down below and you can check them out. So I wouldn't call it a big problem and it is very easy to fix, uh, but it is important that you do put it under a heatsink uh, one way or another. What I am missing here, a bit is some kind of a warning that this needs to be done. And uh, this is an affordable SSD, and I do understand that adding a heatsink will make it more expensive, but writing on the box or on the instructions that this is strongly recommended wouldn't cost them a thing. And that is pretty much the only issue I have with this SSD. Uh, it doesn't really top the charts and it doesn't really do anything amazing, but it does offer excellent overall performance throughout all of the benchmarks and then for a pretty good price. Uh, things like support for hardware encryption and that uh, power loss feature are definitely good to have, uh, but the main focus here is that price to performance ratio. Now, right now, the price of the one terabyte version is around 130 euros here in the Netherlands and it is about 135 dollars in the US. Uh, now there are a few models that are going to be cheaper but those cannot really compare when it comes to performance and would not be a good choice over this one. Uh, while drives that do perform better in benchmarks uh, like the SN850 Black or Corsair MP600 Pro usually cost a lot more. Now prices do tend to change a lot and can very much so differ per region, so it is wise to check the current pricing before buying pretty much anything. And if the price is right, this Crucial P5 Plus can easily be the most sensible option for anyone looking to buy a Gen 4 SSD. Now that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you all in the next one. Bye guys!